The next set of adjustments that we're going to look at here in Photoshop are the shadows and highlights and HDR toning. And these are very specific for photographs and actually give you the ability to make some pretty significant changes to your photographs that otherwise you may not be able to accomplish. First we're going to look at shadows and highlights. And the default setting here in Photoshop is to boost the shadows by 35%. And you'll notice that if I turn off the preview, it's affecting primarily just the shadow areas of the image. You can also uh, darken the highlights here by a little bit just by moving the slider. I typically tend to drop this amount down to around 20 to 25 percent, but it's a way of increasing the shadows in a positive way so that it brings out additional detail in those areas that otherwise you may not be able to target. You'll notice that the mid-tone colors like the sky and most of the rock are virtually unaffected, just some of the darker areas of the rock. Now, you want to be careful when using this control and the next one as well because it's very easy to push your photograph too far to where it looks unnatural and uh, unless you're after that effect. Now, this particular control does have more options. You'll notice here it says show more options and it just gives you, it's the same controls basically expanded out in a really big way. So with the shadows instead of the basic slider you can control the tonal width which is how it affects and interacts with the pixels in that range. Radius again is kind of like if you're adjusting the shadow pixels at say zero. Uh, the radius will expand it out to 30 or 50. You'll notice if I move the slider to the right, things start to get darker and more contrasty versus to the left. So it's kind of just how the, the calculations are made related to the photograph. Same with tonal width. You notice that it gets brighter or darker based on the slider, and it's only affecting the shadow. You can do the same thing with the highlights. You can even adjust the colors here at this level. It's a subtle adjustment. I don't know if you can even see it. You'll notice that the reds are slightly increasing the more I move it to the right. So you can really fine tune your image in some pretty cool ways, especially related specifically to shadows and highlight areas to enhance those particular regions. And the reason why it targets those regions primarily is that the sensors that are in our camera do really good with the mid-tone range, but it's usually in those exposures which are primarily targeting the midtones, that the highlights and the shadows often go to the extreme one way or the other and so this particular adjustment gives us the ability to pull some of that data back in and rebalance the photograph to how it actually appeared when we viewed the scene with our eyes the next adjustment is HDR toning and it does essentially the same thing at a much higher level and I usually, when I use this, which isn't very often, I just stay with the default preset and then make adjustments accordingly. Essentially what's happening behind the scenes here is that you have your original photo, then the program seamlessly creates two additional versions, one that's overexposed, one that's underexposed, and then overlays those three together to give you a greater dynamic range of exposure. So you notice where we're able to bring out a lot more detail in the shadow and in the highlights and we can control how those blend together. You'll notice here where it says edge glow. So edge glow, one of those layers is actually out of focus that it applies to that and it affects the exposure in some pretty cool ways. It helps get rid of a lot of extra noise that may be introduced into the image and it you notice if I move the slider to the left, look what happens to the rocks here versus to the right. You can see the changes that are happening and you also can control the strength which you'll notice that by increasing the strength it's actually starting to sharpen the image. So there's a lot of behind the scenes math that's going on but it's a fairly quick way to enhance your image and bring out some of those shadow details and highlights and boost color all simultaneously. Now this same effect can be achieved by taking multiple pictures in camera and combining them together into one. This is kind of a cheat to mimic that effect 
but in many cases, depending on your photograph, it can be very effective. Next we have a desaturate, and it's exactly what you think it is. When I click on it, it takes your color image and removes all the color out of it to just black and white. However, you'll notice that if we go up to image mode, the image is still RGB. So while it does remove the color from the image, it doesn't change it into a grayscale image, and that can be significant. Okay, especially if you're outputting in certain scenarios like for print. You're going to get a much richer looking image or photograph if it's RGB or CMYK and grayscale versus if you just converted it to grayscale. So let me undo that and let's take a look at the next adjustment. Now the next adjustment is match color. And match color is probably one that you won't likely use much. The primary purpose of it is if you have taken a number of photographs and you tweak one of them to where you like it and you're working on other photographs, they have a similar color and tonal range. You can actually use that previous photograph to globally adjust the new photograph that you're working in now. So I'm going to show you an extreme example. You notice here at the bottom it says source. So I'm going to, and the current source is none. So I'm going to actually choose the sunset image that we had of the windmill earlier as my source image. And watch what happens. It takes the color tonal range of that particular photograph and applies it to our source photograph here now and resets and matches the colors to this image versus what was there for this one. So you can see in this case it's extreme and it doesn't give us a desirable result. But if we had a different version of say this one here, this uh, photograph, let me just change that back to none, and we applied it in the same form, it would auto adjust everything in the photograph to match the target that we just imported. It's especially handy if you're needing to retouch a lot of images that are very similar. It can save you a lot of time that way. But beyond that, it's very limited in its use. And of course, these image options up here just control how the color interacts with the image that you're seeing on the screen, the image that you're working with. Next, we have replace color. And replace color is a very handy tool. It's another adjustment that you may use a lot in certain situations. And here's how it works. You select an area that you want to affect. Like let's say we want to adjust the sky and replace the color from its kind of drab blue gray that exists right now. So I'm going to sample that. And you'll notice here that it highlights in reverse in this area here. And fuzziness, it's basically a slider that controls how much of the tonal range is being affected based on the image or the pixel area that I selected. Now, what's really interesting about this is that you can add to or subtract from this initial selection just by choosing the eyedropper with the plus tool. If I click, say, this area here, you'll notice that that was added to the selection. If I go with the whites, that was added to the selection as well. And let's say I just keep eyedroppering until I'm sure that all of the various blues are selected. Now you'll notice that it's also sampling some values from the rocks, and that's because of the white area of the sky that I picked. So let's say I want to remove that. So I'm going to choose the negative eyedropper and just click on that area alone. And so it removes some of that from the rock. I can also control that some using the fuzziness. So just move that slider to the left, and when I move it to the right, you'll notice it affects more of the image. But here's where this is so powerful. So you can see here is the default resulting color, okay, the average. If I come down here where it says replacement and start adjusting the hue, watch what happens. It affects the color of the sky. It's basically replacing its color, but none of the other image, none of anything that is black here is not being affected at all. So the only thing that's being replaced 
are the areas that are showing up in the white. If I move the fuzziness scale, you'll notice that it'll impact the image a little bit more. Okay, but I could actually, using the negative eyedropper, come over and remove some of those rock areas so that they don't show up. Let's just move this over here. So you can play around with where the subtle balance is based upon what you want to change or not change. And of course you can also affect the saturation and the lightness. So this can have some very far reaching and fun options for you depending on the type of image that you're working in. So like we could start over and just say focus on the uh, trees. And by the way, you can also turn your eyedropper into a plus by holding the shift key down. Notice how it turns into the plus by me holding the shift key down, or I can select, select it here. And you'll notice that there's some green in this area too uh, from moss and stuff. That's why that also showed up. So now I can literally change the color of the trees to any other color and it's not affecting anything else in the scene except for the areas where there is green. So you can see how this could be really effective. You could actually use it, like if we switch over here to Dexter's Lab and choose Adjustments, Replace Color, I can select just the yellow and increase the fuzziness to make sure that it, I get just the yellow and then come down here to hue and as I move the slider I can change his hair to pretty much anything that I want and the more I increase the slider the more it gets rid of the outlining that's happening so it's a very powerful tool that can be used in a lot of different ways and then we could also bring it up again and change the color of his gloves so replace color can be very effective in adjusting some of the images and photographs that you're working on the last one is Equalize, and Equalize really doesn't give you any controls. It just reads the image and decides, this is what I think looks best overall. Essentially, in a lot of respects, you could say that it's a combination of all the above, sort of, kind of, but when you click Equalize, it just reads everything in the image and adjusts it automatically. And actually, I found that its adjustments are very good. Uh, this actually is a very appealing looking end result and we can compare it to the original you can see it's pretty dramatically different and so like all the adjustments that I made over the course of us going through the adjustment tools let's go back here to the original and apply equalize again so you notice that it's based on what it sees at the time, because this looks different compared to what we had before. Okay, so see this was the equalize that we applied first, and so it applied it to the image based upon the other adjustments that we had already made. So that's one thing to keep in mind whenever you're working with Equalize is that it works with what it has. It doesn't go back to the original source image unless you use it with the original source image.